Um, so as mentioned, my name is Ariel. I work for uh, Keen Ecosystem. Uh, our office is in uh, Tel Aviv. And I think before uh, I'm going to go into the actual presentation, I want to speak a little bit about blockchain games because it's a subject that is being repeated here a lot, and I have a few things to say about this. Um, in my opinion, except separate um, a few very um, very individual cases, blockchain and games should only be used if it actually makes sense. And what I mean about that is that your game should be popular, should be uh, do what the game is supposed to do. And if the blockchain helps you for that, awesome, that's great. If not, if you find yourself in a situation that it's more expensive, it takes longer, end user experience is not as good as using a centralized ledger, then maybe you're doing it the wrong way. Want to say that? Let's jump into the presentation. So I want to talk about how you can use a blockchain in order to monetize and increase user engagements in uh, apps and games. And before that, maybe we'll speak a little bit about the history, how it all started. So this started way before the blockchain revolution in 2008. Actually, we're talking about the first uh, years of the two, uh, of early 2000, and um, the country that we are speaking about is Korea. Back then in Korea, the PC game market was heavily dominated by uh, people using torrents. This was a very large problem for Korean game developers because they weren't able to make substantial revenues. Unlike, for example, in Japan, where the most popular uh, way to connect to games were consoles, which you buy the game, so the monetization is, uh, makes more sense. So the Korean game developers have started thinking about new ways of how they can are able to make, uh, to make revenues. Um, and by the way, this is the same problem that the music industry faced a few years later, which of course left, uh, led to, um, to the free uh, to stream models that we are familiar uh, with uh, today. So the first case was in April of 2003, a company called Nexon, Korean company. They launched MapleStory. It's a free-to-play game with a micro in-app purchases. It was a huge hit. It reached already 100 million downloads, and it's still being operated today. But I think the real example will be the, the goal uh, of uh, World in Warcraft. It was launched a year later in 2014, and it was a huge success. Till today, people are still using it as a way to interact and as a way to exchange, uh, to exchange value. Um, it's important to mention that World of Warcraft was already a successful, uh, um, sorry, Blizzard was already a successful company back then, so this was kind of a pivot that they, that they were making. Um, I think that the main point here is that for an entire generation of futurists, technologists, uh, gamers, this whole concept that money can only be held in a green paper, US dollars or another, col another color, it comes from a different country, um, was not the only way. There was other ways as well. As long as their, their interaction between those, do those two people were, was accepted between those two people, there was a way to interact and communicate. So, uh, moving forward, Maple, uh, um, sorry, uh, Maple Story and World of Warcraft are virtual currencies. They were active way before the revolution of 2008. Um, and this goes same for Reddit coin and Amazon coins. Those are also, Amazon, uh, those are also virtual currencies and not cryptocurrencies. The main difference is that creating a virtual currency that will have a success is something that is very costly. It's very expensive. It takes a long time. And usually the companies that are doing that and are able to do that in a successful way are huge companies. Amazon, huge company. Reddit, huge company. Even Blizzard back then in 2004 already had hundreds of millions of dollars of revenues and more than 800 employees. Um, the point is that here that the barrier to create a successful economy based on virtual currency is very, very high. Um, if you uh, change that into a cryptocurrency, then you're making things a little bit more simple in most of the cases. A cryptocurrency simply makes it easier. Let, it, let me even make it more, uh, more clear. A coin that runs on blockchain technology is basically a global microtransaction infrastructure to facilitate in and across a game exchange of value. It means that it doesn't need to live on one app. It means that you're able to take your coins and move them to another application and enjoy the power of the community. Oh, sorry. 
So as mentioned, Blizzard was a huge company. Facebook, 2.4 billion users nowadays, and of course it makes sense that they are launching, a, they're launching it. Keen on the other end, the company I work for, is an example of a shared economy. It means that we are harnessing the power of several apps into one large ecosystem, um, and all together we are able to reach those volumes and provide those benefits that the large players, uh, the large players have. So let's talk a little bit about the problems that apps and game developers they're facing. It's really pretty much repeating across all apps and all games. First one, user acquisition. It's very expensive uh, to purchase a user. Second, retention. Once you purchase the users, often they don't even stay with you or don't stay for a long time. And monetization. How are you making revenues out of that? And that is getting harder and harder. So. How are we tackling the user acquisition? So as mentioned, in our ecosystem at the moment, there's 30 million, um, 30 million users and more than 52 apps that are, uh, that are using that. We are encouraging users to take the tokens that they gathered in one application on one game to move them to another game or another application and use them uh, in that app. It means that the app that receives the coin for creating an, an engaging experiences, they're also receiving free downloads. The larger the ecosystem gets, of course, this is going to be more, uh, more valuable. Second of all, retention. Our developers, they're trying to build experiences around the coin. It means that we are trying to encourage the, um, the developers to do exactly what they were meant, they were trying to do when they came to develop a product. Entice, uh, entice usage. And when you're enticing usage, you're not only creating more time in the app, you're also creating more page views. And more page views bring us to the third uh, point, which is uh, monetization. So accept the fact that we're going to help you make more revenues from your current, uh, from your current um, uh, ad revenue stream. We also created our own type of monetization layer. This monetization uh, layer means that the more awesome experiences that you're creating, you're increasing the usage. And the better user experience, it means that you're receiving more tokens. Now, unlike other um, ad networks, we are, um, we are not uh, distinguishing between users. It means that for us, a user that comes from the United States and the user that comes from a third world country, in which in uh, the ad tech world may have you know, up to a multiple of five or even ten times difference in terms of value, for us it's the same. This is a huge problem for developers because it's really not fair. Think about it. You're creating an amazing product. Users love it. They engage with it. They're even clicking on the advertisement. They're downloading the products. They're praying the products after. But the money that you're actually making per single user is not really increasing. It means that let's say a very, very popular app or a very popular a company will always be receiving CPMs and CPIs that are higher than what medium and small players will be, a, will be a receiving. We think that that's, a not, that's not a fair, a fair world because after all, it's exactly the same user. So uh, we're releasing the tokens according to the usage and not according to who the developer is or, who the use, or where the user is from. So, I want to walk you through um, about um, a case study that, uh, of a design partner that we have. So uh, this app is called Nearby. Nearby is a very popular app to meet people around you. Um, they have more than 5 million downloads and 50 billion messages that were sent uh, on their platform to date. So before they joined us, the challenges that they were facing were as mentioned before, same challenges that uh, a lot of uh, apps and game developers are facing. Engagement and retention and retention and monetization. In the engagement and uh, retention, they were finding themselves buying a lot of media, okay, but only to discover that users are never using the app or using it only once or twice or to delete it or never use it again. This is a huge waste of resources. In the monetization layer, they were seeing that the CPMs and CPI that they were getting from advertisers were not increasing. Not only they weren't increasing, but they were also getting a lot of complaints from their users about bombarding uh, the users with advertisement, meaning negative user experience. So the difference is that in this case, we were able to find a solution for them um, to solve these two uh, problems all at the same time in a native way. Um, so we integrated the uh, Mekin and we allowed Nearby to do exactly what uh, Nearby wanted to do, which is develop awesome experiences and, and, um, and entice the users to create, interact with one another. And the results were very, very promising. So um, 
the first result that we've seen is 88% increase in engagement. This may not sound a lot, but it actually means 14 million more page views for them every month. More page views means they were, um, they were making more revenues from their, uh, from their advertisement. And it also was uh, very well accepted by the users. As you can see, uh, I'm going to jump here. Hear from what Brian meant. Uh, Brian uh, is the CEO of Nearby, and let's read it together. So, Keen quickly became a meaningful source of additional revenues for us. Best of all, unlike other sources of revenues such as advertisements, our users actually enjoy the new experiences we've built using Keen, and they have resulted in a greater engagement with our app. This was very positive for us and very promising. So. Going back to the monetization uh, layer. So as uh, I mentioned before, the more uh, cool experiences that you're creating, the more uh, coins that you're receiving from the Keen Reward uh, engine, which is a mechanism that we created to release token for the usage. So uh, for nearby, it means that in the first two months of working with us, they made more than $20,000, uh, $20, which is significant revenues for a small company. Um, what's really cool about it is that when they, it comes the, the time that they needed to decide what to do with their tokens, instead of exchanging them to US dollars, they actually decided to increase usage by creating more cool experiences and providing those tokens to the users to entice them to spend more. So let's summarize. Promise I'll make it short. Um, blockchain and games are a wonderful match, but in order for really to have success with that, the blockchain needs to serve your game and not the other way around. Today, there are ways that you can do that in a much simpler and easier way by harnessing the power of an ecosystem in the form of a token similar to Keen Ecosystem. With a Keen Ecosystem, you're able to solve the three major problems that you're seeing as a, as a developer, which as mentioned are user acquisition, retention, and monetization. We believe that the more users will join the ecosystem, the larger the, um, uh, the, larger the usage uh, will be, and everybody in the ecosystem will, uh, will benefit from that. That's about it. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you.